Beautiful opening, finally. Finally, these people are learning how to open in Scrabble. What's up, guys? Um, all right, so this is round seven of... Oh, shoot. <laughs> what did I say this was? Round seven of 13. There. One take. One take, okay? Only one take. It's round seven of 13 for the Montreal Tournament. Uh, held last month. I am three and three at this venture, or juncture. Juncture is the word. And I'm playing Chloe Fatsis. Um, yeah, so Chloe is a vertical opener, which is just very pleasant. Um, anybody who opens vertically is more pleasant to, uh, to play for me. Because <laughs> then my next play can be horizontal as all things should be, right? Okay, so uh, she was with Tun. It's actually really interesting. I have her racks here. It's an interesting spot. I think this is the right the right call. Sometimes you don't really know whether to open short with like something like 10 or an exchange or to just take some extra points, but I agreed that Tun was, was the right play here. Uh, it takes a lot of um, a lot of understanding, deep understanding of the game of Scrabble to, to Go ahead and play ton, I think, in that spot. Um, but unfortunately, uh, things go wrong very quickly for Chloe because she challenges floatier, which, yeah, there was a time where I was like, that's a word, really. Um, but indeed it is. And I get to play graduate next turn, and the game is uh, already very far out of reach for Chloe. Um, so Judo comes down after mute. She plays hen bits. Uh, I have this rack here. And I was looking a while for bingos. Uh, I couldn't find anything. Um, but yeah, it took a very long time and I ended up playing Adji, which I just didn't like playing this. I don't really have an S. Like, I don't have an S. I have a blank. So I could draw into a bingo with Adjis. But more likely than not, I'm not going to draw into a bingo here. And this is going to stay there for the rest of the game. But. Yeah, 20 points. What are you going to do? Um, Chloe plays hub. And I, again, burned a ton of time on this rack uh, trying to find the uh, the bingos here. And I finally, I, I quickly saw what I ended up playing, but I didn't see uh, the other possibility uh, the possibilities in, the, in this spot. So I played capitate. Um, at the end of the game, Chloe's like, oh, you, why didn't you play apathetic? I was like, what? Well, who are you? Like, why are you? You're not supposed to be like finding out your like 2000 rated opponent is making bingo misses and you're like 1600 rated or something. Like, what is this? But yeah, um, Chloe's been studying hitting the books at that point in time. I did not know the word apathetic. Um, and she did, and she pointed out my mistake, and obviously I, I have to play Apathetic instead of Capitate because that doesn't open a triple-triple and I'm going up by over 100 points. Um, the other option in this spot is Hepatica, um, which I also didn't see, um, which is safer because it puts uh, the blank in the triple-triple lane and the blank being an H, um, not very dangerous, and um, triple-triples are more dangerous when you have like lower scoring tiles in them, like one point tiles. Um, but on the other hand, having a C versus uh, a blank, even if the blank is like a T or something, you might prefer to put the blank there sometimes because the triple triple is going to score uh, 18 more points through a C than through through a T, for example. Anyways, uh, probably a bad example, but um, it's also something to think about. Um, so putting the blank H there is, is, is definitely better too. Um, I would say, and yeah, uh, Chloe plays dorm. Uh, we weren't sure what her actual letters were here. Um, and uh, here I played oof, just scoring some points. Chloe tries to open another triple triple because I had a rack that could not block. Uh, I could have blocked this triple triple with face. Um, but the reason I didn't do that is because um, she could bingo twice as well, uh, as well as getting a triple triple. Triple triples are obviously pretty unlikely, um, but by playing face, which is basically the only play that seems to make sense to block um, 
triple triple i'm opening the two row uh the o the o column is still there the aji's hook is still there um lots of time for chloe to bingo twice um and i judged that the uh the far worse leave of face um plus the fewer points that it was scoring um and allowing her to come back with with two bingos was not as good as as playing oof and potentially even outrunning two bingos um and also getting rid of i guess certain plays that would reopen the bottom left of the board which has the most space left on it um, of all the quadrants um but yeah also chloe had already triple tripled that day um so i i thought that uh that she wouldn't do it again no but uh she could have there's a blank out and i was definitely worried about the triple triples but sometimes there are other things to worry about as well uh, but this is a really smart move another reason why you might want to block triple triples is not for immediate defense but also for long-term defense because if somebody's struggling down by over 100 points and they're able to open a second triple triple like chloe did here very smartly uh, creating the ing possibility um, there's no way I can block both and she has her ticket back into the game uh, if she hits one of them and I block the other um, so yeah in this spot I was like you know what <laughs> I can just play un CA which is probably the best play uh, through the C but I decided to have some fun play UK and this is definitely a throw um, a content play but uh, I did it for you guys mostly <laughs> Um, there's no reason I should play Ukain um, and set up this O column for S words. Um, I guess there's some long-term benefit to removing this E as a as a threat for the rest of the game, uh, but no, this is obviously completely unsound. Um, but it's fun, um, and I decided, you know, like Chloe had challenged Floatier earlier this game. There's no way that someone who challenges Floatier should ever win. <laughs> ever win a game especially when they're down 100 plus so i thought i would get away with it uh but <laughs> chloe played singly and i started laughing uh when she played this and i held i held the play and i was like that looks so stupid then i was like okay she challenged floatier lost her turn if i challenge singly and singly is a word i could lose not only i could lose because i'm losing my turn but morally speaking karmically speaking i could lose again because i've just given it back to her i've given her turn back um I, i've made a massive blunder uh, when i shouldn't have and so because of that and also because i remembered okay doubly that's what we're singly okay yeah i guess it makes sense in a single manner um all you sing singly people out there i'm here for you um anyway <laughs> So this is funny. Uh, I ended up letting letting the uh, letting the play go, and okay, I I don't know if you read this uh, this commentary, but there's a better play with this this rack G I L N R S Y. If you can find this play, pause the video if you want. Take as long as you want. Um, good luck finding this insane play, and I'll reveal at the end of the game what this play was. Uh, I end up burning the blank for waxing. I draw the second blank. And um, again, going up by over 100, but Chloe plays rewaxing. Uh, and again, let's go back here. This is her rack um, E G K O R V Y. And there's actually a better play than rewaxing in the position, a couple better plays. Uh, one that scores one more point than rewaxing. Um, and I want you to try and find that play as well. So um, if you just got back from pausing the first position and I'm asking you to pause again, I'm sorry. <laughs> but it's really fun. Uh, some couple puzzles here for uh, for um, for you guys. I actually annotated this game uh, with Chloe in this very apartment uh, while she was here at the tournament. And we both like freaked out at both of these positions. This one and this one. Because... Um, plays were were pretty incredible actually i think i freaked out a lot more than chloe did <laughs> but um anyways i like i like beautiful plays what can i say so uh i end up playing civil just to block this lane now um and get rid of my c and my v and score some points try to balance a little bit uh chloe plays vog and in this position i'm up 64 points and i'm looking at the unseen letters and i'm just like okay like, how can she even win this game? I didn't see a single word she could have 
Um, and even if she did have a word, I think I would outrun it. So I ended up playing wary. Um, if I draw the queue, I can play it in a couple of spots. Um, but uh, yeah, Chloe has the queue, has had it for a um, couple of turns. She plays Kai, just her highest scoring reasonable play. Um, and I bingo out with Stapler and uh, win 522 to 388. So a pretty high scoring game. Um, Chloe did well despite losing her turn um, with Floatier. She she fought really well. Um, but yeah, sometimes you just can't recover from, from uh, losing your turn. And okay, so for all of you that uh, want to know what the best plays were uh, in this spot, um, if you spotted C6 soberingly, you are an incredible player, or maybe I've already told you about it. Or both. Uh, so soberingly is the play. Uh, and that's a bingo. That's a 10-letter word making roof. Uh, and it's a normal English word, so if you see it, you play it. Um, it's uh, 89 points, I think. So uh, that's that's better than singly, and that would have been insane. Had she seen that and played it, I might have like completely lost my mind. Because not only <laughs> not only does it um, score so well, it also opens another triple triple. And unless I have a seven letter word ending in N, or a six letter word or plus starting in Y, I cannot block both of the triple triples at the same time. Um, well, I could also have a uh, word starting in C or V, I guess, that starts at uh, G or H14 or something. That would also block both of them. Um, so I guess it was somewhat possible that I could. But uh, yeah, soberingly brings her <laughs> definitely within reach of winning because she doesn't even need to bingo after that. Um, she's going to be at uh, 285 to 319. If I'm struggling a little bit and she's able to score really well, she could still, she could still win. Um, so soberingly was the first play and the second play you have to spot this incredible sandwich overlap underlap crazy move of revoke or evoke uh, if you want to keep the r but uh 14i revoke making ew at jiva which is the key to the position see that you can put a v here and make a word uh ox and ki uh so that is the uh that is the 52 pointer um, so congratulations to everyone who found any of those two plays or both. Uh, let me know if you did in the comments or don't. <laughs> That's fine. I'll keep, I'll keep assuming people are trying. <laughs> and I'll see you guys in the next episode um, for round, I think round eight or maybe round nine. I don't remember. I had a buy at some point. Um, I think it was here. I think it was round eight that I had a buy that I didn't play a game. Um, so maybe I'll see you in round nine. All right. See you guys.